What's up, YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and Bobo, and today we wanted to show you how we transplant and care for my Spathophyllum wallacei. Now, as you all probably know, it goes by the common name of the peace lily, which it got its common name from the beautiful white little spays or the flowers that come up and kind of resemble a white flag waving for peace. Uh, but that's why it got its common name. And it is a gorgeous house plant to have. I've seen them everywhere um, in big box stores to little small grocery chains to everywhere. I think everybody really does like a peace lily. Uh, they're really easy to take care of. They don't require a whole lot in the way of feeding. Uh, they do like a little bit of moderate water and a bright amount of bright shade usually does the trick with these guys. If you have one, I wanted to show you today how to rep repot it or transplant it. I've had this one I got when my father passed away about two years ago and it's been in the same pot ever since. Now don't worry, these plants do like to be slightly root bound. They don't want to be cramped, but they don't want to have a whole lot of space either. So if they're starting to kind of encircle the pot a little bit, you're fine. But once it starts to go around a couple of times and you can see it poking out of the drainage holes in the bottom, it's time to go ahead and repot your plant. Uh, and before I delve in, I just want to go over a little bit of the care for this guy. Uh, next to the yucca cane plant, the peace lily is the second most common uh, house plant that I get questions on all the time. So we're starting off with light. Well, let's just say where it comes from. Uh, this plant is from the tropical areas of the Americas and southeastern Asia. Uh, so these are kind of a rainforest plant. Uh, they're usually tucked down at the bottom below the crown line uh, so that they don't get a whole bunch of light. Uh, but uh, they do get some bright filtered kind of shade also. Uh, so if yours is probably in an eastern facing window or a northern facing window, sometimes will be okay. Uh, but be careful if you're in the west, if you have it in a west orientation or a south orientation because those usually can be too much direct sunlight and probably burn your leaves up. These leaves will burn very easily so you have to be cautious with that. Uh, I'm not saying you can't stick it in a west or a south facing window, but you would definitely have to scoot it back some. Now, the more tricky part other than the light is the water. Now these guys will are great indicators of letting you know whenever they're thirsty. Uh, you'll come in one day and the leaves will look upright and erect and totally fine. And the next day you'll come back and it looks like somebody just sucked all the air out of it and it's all been deflated. And that's really just a piece of the wilting because it needs water. Now, ideally, you want to catch it before it needs that. So you need to pay attention to your peace lily uh, when you first get it and kind of time it and see how long it takes for it to kind of just start to droop uh, because you want to get it a day before it does. Some damage can occur to the leaves and the plant if it starts to wilt all the time and not get water when it needs it. Uh, so I usually water mine about once a week. Uh, you do want the soil to dry out slightly. You want it to be a little moist, but you don't want it to be bone dry at all. Uh, I know a lot of people get brown tips on their peace lily, and that really is just because these are sensitive plants. Uh, they are really sensitive to like fluoride and chlorine and stuff like that, which a lot of tap water has. And here in Kentucky, we have very hard limestone rich water, so I can't give my peace lily tap water or it will look a mess. Uh, what I do is I buy distilled water at about 80 cents a gallon and I water my more sensitive plants like my peace lily, my yucca cane, my orchids, and some of my ferns with the distilled water. Everybody else drinks from the tap. Uh, but yeah, if you give your peace lily some hard or even softened water with salt, uh, it will kind of mess your plant up. But uh, giving it distilled water uh, gets rid of all those toxic kind of other elements that are in there that will mess with your peace lily. Uh, so if you're seeing a lot of brown tips, that could be a, any number of things, uh, but mostly it comes from the water. Uh, it could also be fluoride toxicity, which you know, the fluoride's in the air, it's in the ground, it's in the water. Um, so distilled water will help with that. Uh, but when it comes to feeding, you really shouldn't be feeding your peace lily that much at all. Most people do about every other month. 
uh, because these peace lilies aren't used to processing a whole bunch of nutrients to their system. Uh, so what they do is they end up leaving a lot of it down in the substrate and it'll end up building up to toxic levels in there and then choking your plant out and killing it. So make sure you do not overfeed your peacefully. If you're feeding it every week, every two weeks, or every month, that is way too much. Uh, you should be diluting your fertilizer by at least by half and giving your peacefully uh, a feeding about every other month. Uh, also, the pH for the soil is around 5.8 to about 6.5. So that is a little on the acidic side. Uh, you can add some dolomite lime in there to help, uh, and some sphagnum moss works really well to increase the, uh, the acidity of the plant. Now when the plant flowers, pollen will get on the leaves. It will look like drywall dust, but you can just take a wet washcloth with a solution of four parts warm water to one part lemon juice and wipe the leaves down. If you're finding out that your, your plant is having a little bit of problems, you may want to check the acidity of the substrate to make sure it's about where it needs to be or else the plant isn't going to be absorbing the right amount of nutrients that it needs uh, because the acidity isn't right for the plant. Now all that being said, uh, there is a lot more to know about the peace lily and if you want to find out more about it, please feel free to check out my other video on the care for the spathophyllum. But now I just want to show you what to do to go ahead and repot it. As always, I've got my little plastic bin down here to catch all the debris and dirt that's going to fall and I have it's a new container right here that I've rinsed out and uh, washed and sanitized. I always 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 clean the new pots uh, because they have been sitting on a shelf for God knows how long. They've been in storage for even longer and who knows who's touched all over these. So you don't want your plant to start off uh, with any kind of disease or infection or anything. So I always clean the new containers out with hot soap and water and a scrub brush too. I also keep some isopropyl alcohol on me to sanitize any of my pruning shears or anything that may be touching the plant to get them off to the right start. Next I will get my pruning kits and I will get out my pruning shears, my root hook, and my root rake. Wipe them all down to make sure they are clean before I use all these tools on this other plant. Sanitize the cutting blades really well of your pruning shears. Keep them sterile. And finally the root rake. Next I will go ahead and take the pot and start kind of squeezing it to kind of loosen up the root ball. And as you can see, he is kind of starting to wake up from the spring and the winter months there. So he's got some dead leaves on him. And it looks like on one of these leaves over here, he's got a new flower coming in. And then kind of squeeze the container and there's a hole in the middle so I'll stick my thumb down in there to kind of loosen that up all right now as I always say you want to water your plant at least 24 hours before you start to transplant uh, because look at all this mess in here with these roots they are a little thick and there's a whole bunch of them so I'm going to start separating the roots and the substrate with my root rake and picking off any kind of dead leaves and while you're down here just take good note of the roots do you see any discoloration any mushy roots or smell anything that kind of smells nasty these signs may indicate that you do have root rot so look over your roots really well. They should all be uniform in color. All right, now that I've gone through most of it with the root rake, I'm just taking my hand and lightly going in and moving my fingers around a little bit to loosen up some of the dirt around these roots. Uh, if you don't want to stick your hand up in there, 
just take a root hook and just start going at it with the root hook and it'll knock out all that substrate real easily and you won't have to get your fingers dirty but that could take a little bit longer but it's not a race they say as a general rule of thumb you can remove about three quarters of a plant's root mass without causing harm to the plant so I've got about a quarter of the dirt up at the top about where I want it to be and then I'm going to trim the rest of these gorgeous roots back so I've got my pruning shears anything that sticks well out past the dirt I'm just gonna start pruning all right and trimming the roots back this aggressively what it does is it gives your plant plenty of room to spread out in its new container so it will grow all this back fairly fast all right now we've trimmed below so we want to trim above too so any kind of dead stems or leaves try to pick out and if you can't pick them out go ahead and uh, trim them out just be very careful because you don't want to nick any of the green leaves that are still healthy and intact now if you accidentally do make a, a hole on your healthy plant or you nick it just take some 100% sure uh, pure cinnamon and put it over the cut cinnamon as we know acts as a natural antibiotic and will keep any kind of uh, viruses or pests or disease at bay instead of introducing it back into your plant all right that looks like all the dead and dying leaves I see a long root sticking out over here so I will go ahead and prune him off and then I see another one so just give it a good look over before you pot and everything seems to be okay now these guys are from the rainforest and ideally they do like a lot of water and humidity uh, so that being said the kind of substrate that they need is something that is very nutrient rich and packed in with a lot of food but it's also porous and can drain really quickly so I will use my cactus and palm succulent mix to cover up the bottom of the container so that the plant will be able to drain just fine and I've made sure that my container has plenty of drainage holes in the bottom because these guys do not like to be sitting in stagnant water all day and then next I'm going to go ahead and add in some of this raised garden bed soil just for added nutrients and heft kind of mix that in around just a little bit I don't want to mix it too much because I don't want the heavier parts to go to the bottom and then clog up the holes so I want a layer of very porous soil and then some nutrient rich kind of compost and then some more porous soil on top so now I've got it filled up to about right here I'm gonna make a little divot in the middle so that the roots have a place to sit and then I will grab my plant, sit him about up here in the middle. All right, now this next part is very important. As you're adding the soil in, you want to compact or tamp the soil down to rid the soil of any air bubbles that might be there because the air bubbles will add strain to the roots and stress to the plant and then end up killing your plant as well so always 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 whenever you're adding soil into a new plant make sure you tamp it down 
And then after you're done planting, you will water it. And watering it will remove any of the rest of the air bubbles that tamping did not get rid of. All right, now that I've got the substrate in there about where I want it, all I'm doing is taking my fingers and pushing down all the way around the plant and tapping all this, tamping all the soil down, even up close to the leaves at the base of the plant and around the side of the walls of the pot. You want to make sure that that soil is compacted rather nicely. You don't want to punch it down and you don't want to press really hard, but you do want to press fairly hard to make sure it is compacted down in there. The soil should go down about an inch, inch and a half, or two inches. And as I said, you don't want to go too hard because you don't want to break a bunch of roots, but pressing fairly hard is not going to do that. And then at this point, you can add in more soil if you like. But if you feel it's right where you want it to be, then the next step is just to go ahead and water the plant to rid it of any other air bubbles that might still be in there. It does look a little lopsided, uh, but over time he will straighten out. And then next, let's go ahead and get some distilled water and give him a nice little drink. Yes, with the water, you do want to go around a little bit around the whole base of the plant to kind of make sure that you're getting rid of any air bubbles that might be in the soil. All right, guys, that's really all I wanted to do with this plant. Like I said, if you have any more questions or comments or concerns, check out the other video I did on taking care of the peace lily. Uh, this is a medium sized peace lily. Uh, they have them from all the way down to small size, almost dwarf to medium to really super large. Uh, the leaves get about 20 inches long. And if you have a lot of space, it is a great plant to add to kind of a focal point and take up some space. Well guys, uh, now that you've checked out my video, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever had any kind of success or failures with your piece of leaf. And then while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it, that way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you YouTube. Real quick, I wanted to thank my Patreon subscribers. Pam donated this month. If you're interested in supporting my channel or my Patreon, please check the link in the description box below.